gave their life for Christ. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. True. We in America are so spoiled. Yes. <coughs> that whenever persecution does set in, come on. I think the scripture that straight is the gate and narrow the way and few to be that find it will really set a, set into reality for us Amen. because I don't know how many people is going to be able to make it over come here. On. Amen. Amen. Because of the fact that persecution is not something that we're used to. All right. Now over here in these other countries, right. we have dear brothers and sisters in the Lord that Come are on. giving their life on a daily basis. Amen. Many in prison, Brother Dave. Right. Many have given their life and True. many in fear True. for their life. Yes, sir. Just to be able... Now this is how spoiled America is. We've got, like Brother Dave said, we've got good lighting, we've got padded pews, we've got carpet on the floor, we've got air conditioning. Yes. We can't fill churches unless we want to pre unless we preach what the people want to hear. Uh -huh. Amen. True. It's not always this way, but I'd almost guarantee you, eighty percent of the time, if your church is full, you ain't preaching. Right. All right. Right. Amen. True. And we see that bared, bared out in the Word of God when it says there'll be a great falling away and there'll be those that will turn from the truth yes. to fables. Yes. But these people over here, what they would give to have the freedom right. to come to a place like this tonight Amen. to hear the Word of God. Amen. I'll never forget, years and years ago, I heard Brother Swagger tell a story about them taking some Bibles to one of the other countries. And the men that took them to the people, they said they had to go down some alleys, and they had to go about some back ways, they had to smuggle them in. So whenever they got to where they were taking the Bibles, there was people sitting around. They only had like one piece of a, of, of a page maybe right. out of the Bible. True. And as soon as they handed those Bibles out to those people, they held them close and tears ran down their face. Amen. Oh, but not in America. No. Many people leave it on their pew to save their seat so somebody don't get it next right. Sunday. Amen. On. Many are the people in our churches today that don't open their Bible until the pastor gets behind the pulpit and says, go with me tonight to the book right. of John. And they exactly. open up their Bible. But these people know what it's like to appreciate the Word yes, of God. Sir. We need to make it a not a habit. Well, maybe a habit. There's good habits. Amen. We need right. to make it a practice to daily pray for those that are persecuted for the cause of Christ. Amen. Amen. Right. And to lift them up before the Lord and ask the Lord to keep His hand of protection on. on them and that they could have the same freedom that we're afforded. Yeah. Go with me tonight in the Word of God to Mark the 5th chapter, the book of Mark the 5th chapter. I don't have a whole lot tonight, but I do have a little something. We've been talking the last few weeks, and we finished up Sunday morning, I think anyway, on faith, and uh, desperate faith, Brother Dave. Amen? Amen? Faith that believes God in spite of everything that's going on around us. Amen? Amen? Faith that believes in the impossible because we serve a God where all things are possible. Amen? Come Hallelujah. On. Faith that believes in the improbable because that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen? Amen. The God. No other God besides Him. There is Amen. no God like our God. Amen? He's the Amen. God that, that spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. And when Moses said, Who am I going to tell Pharaoh sent me? Because Pharaoh knew all kinds of gods are, with a little g. Amen? Right. They worshipped the frog god, the calf god, the cactus god, the worm god, whatever kind of god they come up with. They worshipped the frog god. Amen? They worshipped a lot of things in Egypt. So Moses said, Well, which, which god am I going to tell them sent me? Right. And our God speaks to Moses from the burning bush with the Tyler and He says, Tell them I am that I am have sent you. Amen? Come on. In other words, tell them I am God. Uh -huh. Amen. Not, not one of Pharaoh's gods. Come on. Not the sun god or the moon god, but the one that hung the sun and the moon on, in praise. space. Amen? On, tell them I am right. sent you. Yes. I am God. I am. And besides me, there is no other. Amen. Amen? That's the God we serve. That's why we cannot compromise and join hands with the Muslims. Amen? Right. Because they don't believe our God is God. Right. They don't believe Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Right. Amen? Come on. The Bible says that God became flesh and dwelt among oh us. God. Amen? The Bible says one of His names was Emmanuel, which meant right. God with us. Oh, Amen? Man, so it's impossible for us to walk in the unity with their faith. Come on, preach. Should we love them? Yes. Should we share the truth with them? Yes. yes. Should we pray for them? Absolutely. Yes. 
I've told you time and time again the difference between our Bible and their Quran. Our Bible says to pray for those that despitefully use you. Our Bible says to love your enemies. Amen. Their Quran says kill them. True. Kill them. Come on. And not only kill them, but you'll be rewarded if you do. Right. I'm all for freedom of religion. Amen? Amen. I realize that if we don't afford the freedom of religion to other false teachings, if we don't afford it to them, then we probably won't have it either. Amen? Amen. But when you allow a teaching that promotes murder and mass destruction, amen? Right. That's not religious freedom. Amen? Come on, preach. That's giving freedom to terrorists. Right. Amen. True. And I don't, I don't go for that. Amen? Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's not what I'm preaching on tonight. I want to talk to you about the message that is the message. You know, you hear a lot of people and they talk about, well, our denomination, we have the message. Yeah. This is the message. Right. Amen. This is the message for the last days. Yeah. Well, the message today is the same as it's always been. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. From the Garden of Eden to the end of the book of Revelation, that's what you find in the pages of God's Word. Wow. Amen? So when someone tells you, we've got the message. Yeah. If it ain't this message, it ain't the message. Come on. Man. The finished work of the cross has always been the message. The only hope for mankind is the message of the cross. Yes, sir. The only hope for me was the message of the cross. Amen. The only hope for you today right. is the message of the cross. And in Mark, the fifth chapter, we find a picture that probably as plain as any that we see in the Word of God. This deals with the woman with the issue of blood. And I know that we've all heard it. And we've all read it. And we've heard thousands of sermons on it. But let's look at this. And let's compare her condition to the condition of man. Let's compare what the things that she did to try to fix her problem with the way that man tries to fix his problem. And let's compare what her remedy was to what our remedy is today. The Bible says in Mark the 5th chapter, the 21st verse, and I'm not going to keep you but a few minutes. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship under the other side. See, He just came from the land of the Gadarenes where He cast the, de the demons out of the man and into the swine. The Bible says that he passed over again by ship to the other side. Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh to the sea. Verse 22 says, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she may live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him. And thronged him. That's meaning they were they were right on they were all over him. They were pressed right up against him. People trying to get a hold of people trying to get a touch of Jesus. The Bible says, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for twelve years, this was a woman that had suffered for a long time in the condition that she was in. We will find here in just a moment that she had tried everything she could try. And within this example that Jesus, that the Word of God gives us here, we see a picture of man without God. This woman was hopeless as far as man was concerned. She had been to every doctor. She had tried everything there was to try in this world, Brother Dave, that at least she had knowledge of. Amen. And not only does the Bible tell us that it didn't help her any, Brother Tyler, but she was worse. Come on. That's the way the world will leave you. Yes, sir. Worse off than you were when they started on you. Amen. Amen. Satan will use you. He will abuse you. Right. And he will walk away laughing while you lay there Amen. helpless. Amen. Amen. True. But the Bible says she was sick for 12 years. Yeah. This disease mm -hmm. that she had was an issue of blood. Now this made her unclean. Come on. Amen. If you read the Levitical law and if you read the Old Testament, you'll find out that this woman was unclean. Right. Sin makes man unclean. All right. Amen. True. This disease that she had was an uncleanness. It rendered her unclean by the law. So does the disease of sin. Amen. Mankind is infected and polluted right. by a disease called sin. Come on. And this sin 
makes us unclean and filthy in the sight of God and dirty and unclean according to the law of God. Amen? Right. So we see that this woman was unclean and man in his fallen state without Christ is unclean. Amen? Wow. Verse 26 says that she had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. This woman's only hope now that she had exhausted every natural avenue now had to come from a supernatural one. Amen. This woman now she had been to every doctor she could think of. Yeah. No doubt she had had recommendations from other people. Well you need to try this. You need to, how many people have ever been sick before and somebody tell you well you need to Gargle salt water. You need to put some mustard on your chest. Yeah. You need to you need to boil some hot water and stick your head in a pan and under a towel and breathe in some vapor. Amen. All kinds of remedies. Yeah. And they had remedies then, like we have remedies in Kentucky, you know. Right. A lot of folklore. Try this and see if that helps you. Yeah. And that's what man does. True. Man realizes when man does realize that the problem is sin. Then man is too ignorant to know what the actual cure is. Amen. Come on. You say, well, I, 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 I just feel unworthy. Well, do some, do some penance. Do some work. You go to the Catholic church and say, Father, I have sinned. What do they say? Go do 15 Hail Marys. Do some community service. Right. And you'll be clean. Man points in every direction for cleanliness and for, for salvation other than where it needs to be pointed. And that is the cross of Calvary and the blood that was shed there by the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin of the world. Religion cannot make you clean. Amen. Works cannot make you clean. You can give your very last dime. You can give the clothes off of your back. You can give the last bit of food that you have to feed the hungry. And it will do you no, know, it will make you no more righteous in the sight of God than the drunken skin roll that drinks his breakfast out of a bottle. We think that these things make us more holy. There is only one source of holiness today, and that comes from the blood of the Lamb that was shed on Calvary's cross, Brother Dave. Amen. But because these things make us feel better right. about ourselves, yeah. we think that we attain some type of righteousness from it, but we don't. Right. Sanctification and justification and righteousness only comes one way. Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Amen. The blood of the Lamb yes. is the only way to get yourself clean. Amen. There's no other way to be clean today. Right. This woman had tried a lot of physicians. Absolutely. She had taken, no doubt, a lot of prescriptions. Amen. Right. People had prescriptions. A lot of remedies people had told her, you know. Yeah. And I looked up, one of the scholars said that one of the things that they tried to use for this type of, of sickness, this issue of blood, was to take some Persian onions, grind them up and put it in some water and let them drink it. See if that stops it. She'd been to all them doctors. Well, here, take this, see if this helps. Yeah. Take this, see if this helps. That's what religion will do. Come on. Mm -hmm. Take this and see if this will help. She found out real quick that all of these remedies, she wasted all of her substance. Right. She had brought herself to poverty. True. Amen. She may have been a wealthy woman at one time. She wasn't no more because she had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had. Amen. She had exhausted every avenue, and that's the way we are usually. Yes. We have to exhaust, we got to try everything else before we try Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking oh. about man in general. Man will try everything else True. before they try Jesus. She tried everything. She had brought herself to poverty Amen. by going in all these directions trying to fix that which was broken and she just became more broke. She had no money. She, had, she tried all the medicines. None of it helped. Mm. Made her worse. How many people ever tried medicine instead of it making you better it made you worse? All right. That's what happened to her. True. Amen. <coughs> This is the way it is with mankind. When man in some measure knows, Brother Tyler, that sin, that there is the disease of sin, then man in his ignorant ways tries to cure it in other ways other than the right cure. There's only one remedy for sin. That is the blood of Jesus. 
All of the lambs, all of the rams, all of the sacrifices that it showed examples of in the Old Testament were all pictures and types of the Lamb of God that would come and shed His blood on the ultimate altar, the, the, the blood-stained cross of Calvary. Only one way to be fixed. Religion can't fix you. Alcoholics Anonymous cannot fix you. Amen. As a matter of fact, they'll teach you that you're an alcoholic. You've always been an alcoholic. You always have been an alcoholic. Mm. Come on. I don't see that in here. The Apostle Amen. Paul said all things pass away yeah. and all things become new. Amen. Amen. You don't always have to be an alcoholic. Amen. You don't always have to be a drug addict. Right. There is a new beginning. There is a being born again right. that takes place in the life of man. A transformation like that took place to the Apostle Paul. Amen. He didn't have religion as Saul. He was a religious man. Right. He thought what he was doing, he was doing in the name of God. Killing Christians. Right. Until he found the real remedy on the road Amen. to Damascus. And then he would stand before the church and say, I'm persuaded that to not know anything among you save Christ and Him crucified. He didn't say baptism. I believe in baptism. But listen to me. If you are trusting baptism to save your soul, you're in trouble. Amen. They can take you to the Green River and they can dunk you from morning till night and you'll go down a sinner and come up a sinner. Amen? Until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and put your faith in Him, there ain't no sense in you getting baptized. Amen? Amen. Because it's not in baptism. Right. It's in faith in Jesus Christ. Come on. Faith in what He did. This woman needed something desperately. Man needs something desperately. Amen? Right. Since the Garden of Eden, man has been in, has been affected and infected by a disease right. called sin. Right. And there's only one remedy for that. Absolutely. Jesus Christ. Exactly. And the lost need to hear that. Amen. They need to know that there's one hope. Right. One help. On. One medicine. Right. One antidote for what ails you. Amen. That is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Come on, preach. Jesus Christ. When He hung there and said it is finished, yeah. He meant what He said and He said what He meant. Exactly. Sister. That is the only hope for mankind. This woman had one hope. Absolutely. Nothing the world had can help her. Nothing the world has can help you. Amen. Her only remedy was Jesus. Right. Your only remedy is Jesus. Come on. <laughs> but man will try to lean on everything else. We try to lean on religion. Right. We try to lean on works. And all of these are like these positions this woman had there of no value whatsoever. All right. As a matter of fact, these things make things worse on you. Come on. They make your condition worse. Why? Because whenever we believe that our salvation or our righteousness can be found in works or in religion or in our religious duty, whatever, when we fail, when we mess up, whenever we fail to keep that which we believe is the standard for holiness, we find ourselves laying flat on our face saying, Oh God, I failed. I failed. Yeah. I couldn't keep the law. Come on. No, and the sooner you realize that, the better off you'll be. Amen. There's only one that has ever came that, were, that was able to keep the law. Right. And faith in Him is the only way you'll ever keep True. the law. You're a law keeper because of your faith in the one who kept the law. Exactly. He fulfilled the law. Yes. Now does that give you a license to sin? If you believe that, then I don't know if you're saved or not. Amen? Come on. All of us need to Try to walk right, live right, spit Amen. right. Amen. I believe all of that. Yes. But it don't save us. That's it don't right. save you. Right. It doesn't save you. The only thing that saves you is accepting Jesus and His, the price that He paid. Amen. Amen. There was one remedy for this woman. There's one remedy for the world today, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes, sir. The more man leans on the things that he believes are the remedies, the more dependent he becomes on them the more damage he does to himself. Because for in doing these things, when he messes up, when he fails to keep his religious duty that he believes makes him holy, oh, you're talking about the grief that grips your soul. Like, oh God. I, I know people through the years that they're, they act like they're saved one day and lost the next. Amen. And they base that upon how holy they're able to live. 
They believe they're saved because they live this holy. But the minute they mess up, they're not saved anymore. That's not biblical salvation. Biblical salvation comes from only one way. Jesus Christ and His precious blood. Amen. No other way. I don't care what your religion teaches. I don't care what your leader says. There is salvation in only one, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Through His blood. When John looked up when he was baptized at the River Jordan, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. The thief that was on the cross beside of Jesus, the malefactor, had no time to go and do any religious works. He had no time to join a church. He had no time to get baptized. All he had time to do was put his faith in the one that was hanging there on the cross beside wow. of him, Jesus Christ. He said, remember me, Lord. See, there's his faith. Right. When you come into your kingdom, come on. there's his faith. Yes. That's what it takes. Faith. Amen. Faith. Faith that Jesus, that's what this woman had. She had said within herself, listen, the 27th uh, verse says, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, if I touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. That's faith. She, read, she didn't, it wasn't so much that she went out and touched him with her hand because other people were touching him. And you can go ahead and read the rest of it. Jesus stops and says, who touched me? And the disciples said, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. Yeah, but somebody got a hold of him with faith. All right. Oh, faith moves God. Amen? Amen. Faith is a necessity. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen. There's only one way to please God. He said, without faith, it is impossible right. to please Him. Amen? Amen? Only one way to please Him. Faith. Faith, and there's only one place to have your faith tonight. Not in your leaders, not in your religion, not in your denomination, but in Jesus Christ and His finished work. That's the only faith that's going to get you from here to glory. Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Amen. He was the only remedy for her. He is the only remedy for you today. And the Bible says that whenever she touched Him, Verse 29, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Amen. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. All of her efforts had failed. All that the world had to offer had failed. But when she got a hold of Jesus, oh, all of your efforts will fail today. All that the world has to offer you will fail today. Amen. But when you get a hold of Jesus, oh my, my, my. It's still the old rugged cross plus nothing. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Jesus Christ is the only remedy. He's always been. I told you Sunday morning. When he, when he told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I'm a new way. I'm the new truth. Or, I'm a, he had always been. In the Old Testament, what saved and justified them was faith in the Lamb that was to come. On this side of the cross, what saves and justifies us is faith in the Lamb and what He did on the cross of Calvary. When you get to heaven and talk to Abraham, and you say, Abraham, how would you get here? I got here by faith, just like you did. The Bible says Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Faith in Jesus Christ is how Abraham was saved. Amen? Right. Jesus even turned to the Pharisees and said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced in it. Amen? When he climbed up that hill with Isaac, with the, with the knife and with the firewood and no lamb, Isaac said, Father, where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, God will provide himself a, a lamb. <laughs> Abraham saw my day. Come on. That's how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were saved. Say right. where you are. Come on, preach. They were looking toward that which was to come. Now today we look at that which has taken place. Right. 
All of us are saved the same way. Jesus Christ has always been the way, Amen. the truth, truth, and the life. Amen. True. Always. It didn't just happen when He was born Come on. of Mary. The man Jesus was born of Mary. The God Jesus had always been. Amen. Amen. He had always been. John in the book of Revelation said he saw a lamb that had been slain from the foundation of the world. Right. Amen. Somewhere in the eternity past, the son said, I'll go. Right. Praise and God. be the sacrifice Praise for mankind. Right. Laid down his wheel to be the sacrifice for mankind. Amen. I'm closing. And Jesus, verse 30, And Jesus immediately, knowing in Himself that virtue had gone out of Him, turned Him about in the press and said, Who touched My clothes? And the disciples said unto Him, Thou seest the multitude throng in Thee, and sayest Thou who touched Me? Yeah, but this was different. And He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing, trembling, knowing that what was done in her came and fell down before Him and told Him all the truth. And verse 34, He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. When her faith touched Him, she had faith in doctors, she was still sick. She had faith in her money. She was still sick. She had faith in medicine. She was still sick. When she put her faith in Jesus, she was made whole. The thief on the cross, no doubt, had had faith in a lot of things in life. Probably had more faith in himself than he did anything else until he got caught. But when he put his faith in Jesus, that was the remedy for the sickness that plagued him. Jesus is the remedy for the sickness that plagues you today. And not just for salvation. The work of the cross, not just for salvation, but for sanctification, right. for justification. For even after you're saved, you have to realize what keeps you saved is the same thing that saved you. Yes. Faith in Jesus Christ and His shed blood. Yes, sir. Faith in His righteousness that is imputed unto us. I don't care how good you are, you ain't good enough. Amen. Amen. I don't care how many works you got going, what your church attendance is, right. what the, ch the charitable giving you. We may not have missed your tithe in 30 years. You still ain't good enough. Right. Nobody will stand before God and boast that they're good enough. Right. If you stand before Him justified, it'll be because you are washed in the blood of the Lamb and nothing Amen. else. Amen. He is our remedy today, our hope. Yes. Oh, trust in Him. You can't go wrong. Right. Amen. Trust in Him and you can't go wrong. Praise the Lord. Somebody else tonight have something before we go.